Mamu Art Box. My name is Deborah, and this is Draw With Me Tutorial Part 2. Now, if you haven't watched Part 1 yet, please do so now. I'll leave a link up top. That one is how to draw an owl in Procreate. Um, the reason I'm saying to look at this tutorial first is because I will be going over or using tools that I had discussed in the first tutorial. Now, I might skim over how to use these tools or where to go with these tools, but if you watch the first one, it'll give you a better understanding of the tools that I am using in this tutorial. So what we are going to learn today is how to draw a Totoro. Um, for those of you who've bought stickers from me or you've been to my sticker shop, you know that I love Ghibli, <laughs> everything Ghibli. Um, and to be honest with you, Totoro is not that hard to draw. Some of the other characters, yes, they're a little bit more complicated, but Totoro is actually very basic shapes. So that's what we're going to be learning today, and hopefully by the end of the tutorial you'll have a Totoro looking back at you. Um, if you're following along with pencil and paper, that's totally fine. I will try to explain what I do with traditional pencil and paper, and also what to do in the program. So if I'm talking about the program, you can just ignore that and um, try to figure it out on pencil and paper. Now, I'm going to open the program. So I've opened Procreate, and right away, there's a Ghibli jar on the stage. Now, the reason this is already here is because um, it's for reference. So whenever you're drawing any kind of fan art, any kind of anime, uh, say you're copying an image to get better at drawing that character, uh, you'll, you want to get reference from online to see how that artist draws the character, what the character looks like at different angles, the coloring of the character. You just want to have some sort of reference to look back on. So Procreate has a neat feature where you can open a reference panel. Um, at the top left-hand corner where the wrench is, if you tap on it, there's a toggle under Canvas for reference. So if you press that toggle, a little box will appear. Now this box has three options. It has canvas, image, and face. Canvas will show what you're drawing on your canvas. Um, image will show, say you've saved something from Google, a JPEG or something into your photos. Uh, image will import those photos into uh, that reference panel. So this is what most people use if they're looking at reference from, say, here's Violet Evergarden. If I wanted to draw Violet from Violet Evergarden, then I can look at her, the reference here, and then draw her over here. Um, you can also take this box, so if I tap on it, you can move it around the stage so that when you're drawing, it doesn't impede your drawing. Now, I like to have my reference on the stage um, on a separate layer so I can just delete it later. Uh, so I don't really use this reference panel, but it is a good tool if you're, if you're more comfortable with using that. So if you want to turn this off, because I'm not using it, go back to the wrench and then just turn off the toggle. Or there's a little X on the top if you touch the panel again, and you can close it that way. So I'm going to create a new layer under layers plus, and then it'll give me a new layer. I'm going to choose Studio Pen, which is the one that I use to draw most of the time in Procreate. It's a default pen within the program. And I'm going to start off with drawing the center line of the body, a straight line. Now in Procreate, there's a little cheat where you draw the line. So if you draw the line squiggly and you hold the pen down, it'll create the line for you, then you lift your pen off the page. Um, if you're doing it with pencil and paper, make sure that you use a ruler for this. So again, we're going to draw a horizontal line. This is the eye line. And then underneath the eye line, if you want, you can draw a short nose line. So this is where the nose is going to go. Now with most drawings, I always start off with the center line. Um, and then the eye line, and then the nose line. Uh, the reason I do this is because if I'm doing a front view, I want it to be symmetrical, so I want to know roughly where things are going. Uh, so now when I look at Totoro, I break him down into shapes. 
And most of the time when you're looking at characters or any kind of drawing or any kind of object that you're drawing, you do want to break it down into shapes. You want to make sure that like when you're looking at something, you can break it down into, into those shapes. So Totoro is basically an egg shape. His body is basically an egg. His arms are ovos, his ears are triangles, the things attaching his ears are rectangles, his feet are circles. Um, and he's, fair, again, he's fairly simple to draw. The cat bust, on the other hand, is a little more complicated simply because they merge shapes into other shapes. And there's a lot of feet on the cat bust. And I'm not even going to get started on Howl's Moving Castle. I'll show you that one later, but that one was very complicated. So with Ghibli things, the cute little characters are pretty simple to draw. It's the ones that are bigger or shapes merging into shapes that are a little bit more complicated, but that's getting off the point. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Totoro and we're going to break him down. Now his body is an egg shape. So what you want to do is draw an oval and try to get it as centered as possible. Um, I'm going to do this on another layer so I can actually move the circle. So again, with Procreate, you can cheat and you can draw a circle however you like, hold down the pen, and it'll create an ellipse and then say edit shape up top, click ellipse, and you can move the anchor points around to center your circle. So as you can see, mine is a little bit off centered, so I'm going to move that over so that it is centered. And how you do that is you just hit the arrow tool up top on the left hand side and you move the circle around. Now, if you, again, if you're doing this on pencil and paper, you want to try and get it as close as possible to what this looks like without having to move anything because you don't have layers. Now, He's not really that shape. He's an oval, but his bottom half is a little bit fatter than his top half. So he's more of an oval egg shape. Now, in order to distort the lines for this, you can take the move tool and hit distort and then pull the top left and right anchor points in ever so slightly. And you can pull the left and right anchor points at the bottom out ever so slightly. That way the bottom half of him is fatter than the top half. Okay, now because this is rough, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be a base so that we know where everything is going. Now you want to draw his arms in. So his arms are is also an ovo, so let's draw an ovo. And then let's do the same thing to the other side. And then his feet are circles, so let's draw a circle here and a circle here. And again, you can hold down while you're drawing the circle, go to edit shape and click circle for a perfect circle. His eyes are a circle, so let's put his eye on the eye line. Another circle. Then his ears are rectangles. They're attached by rectangles. So Procreate allows you to, to draw a rectangle. Hold down your pen tool, edit shape, and then you can click rectangle to fix it. Same thing on the other side. And we're going to draw a triangle for the ear. And there you have it. That's the basic shapes of Totoro. He is made out of ovals, circles, rectangles, and a triangles. So, now that we have the base down of what he's broken up into, 
we are going to start putting in details. So I'm going to merge these two layers by pinching 39 and 40 together to create one layer. Then I'm going to go to normal and pull back the opacity to maybe 30. I'm going to add another layer on top and this layer we're going to do the final line work and try to make it as clean as possible. So if you're doing this with pencil and paper, you're going to want to erase the shapes underneath as you're drawing your final lines in. But if you're appropriate, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do, we're going to draw half the body, only half, and I'm going to tell you why. So in Procreate, it's easy to duplicate one half of the body, reflect it, and then join the other layer, the other half that you duplicated, to the left hand side. So you only really need to draw one side of the character because it's a front view and it's supposed to be symmetrical. This is, um, this is why you only need to do half. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let's draw in only half the body. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. So with his arm here, you want to make sure that it joins to the body. Um, the shape is just a guide to show you uh, what the arm shape is like. So let's do that. Let's draw in the arm and I'll show you what I mean. You're only going to do half, an, half a circle and you're going to leave an opening here. Just to say that, oh, this arm is joined to the body. And because the arm is in front, you want to erase the line where the line go, where the body line goes in. You want to erase that line just to join it together. And I'm going to sharpen this part a little bit just to make it look more imposing. You can add a little line in to say that that's full. And then we're going to draw in his feet which is a circle. So draw a circle at its shape, then circle. And then you're going to erase the line in that circle just because the foot is in front of the body. So you don't want that line to be there either. And then within this circle, he has paw pads. So we want to do the paw pads. The paw pads are also circles. They don't have to be perfect. So we want to do his eye now. As I'm looking at the reference, that's the next step. So let's do his eye. His eye is also a circle. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but it should be in the somewhere in the vicinity of where that shape is underneath. And the inside of his eye or pupil is a circle as well. And I'm going to take my color over here on the top right hand side and drag and drop it in so that we fill the eye. And now I want to draw in his nose. So his nose is basically a half circle here, an arc, and a rectangle. So let's draw half a rectangle. Drag and drop the color in. Okay, that looks good. Now I want to draw in his ears. So his ears, if you zoom into the reference, have a little bit of tough um, connecting it on the rectangle and the rectangle itself is kind of curved. So we're going to put in a little bit of a wave on both sides and we're going to erase the area where the ear is supposed to connect to the body. Then with the rectangle, we're just going to curve that line instead of doing a full on rectangle and we're going to curve the other side too.
And you want to make sure your line work is as clean as possible. Um, if that means that you need to erase some of the lines, please do so. Now his belly is also half a curve or half an arc, so we want to put that in as well. So you could start here and just do a little arc. And again, the same, it works the same way as if you were to draw a circle in Procreate, where you draw the line and then you hold down and then it'll give you a shape. So say I hold down right now, I don't like how that arc looks, so let's do a, one that's a little more curved. It says arc created, edit shape, and then you can edit the arc how you see fit with the anchor points if you want by pulling on the anchor points with your pen tool. And then because the belly arc is underneath the, um, it's underneath the arm, you're going to want to erase this line as well. So we're going to do that, but I still don't like how the arc is looking, so I'm going to redo it. When something doesn't look like 100% right to you, make sure that you go back and you fix it. Like, take your time with it. Don't rush. So I'm going to erase this line now because the arm is in front of the belly. Clean that up a bit as well. Okay, I think that looks good. Now he has whiskers and a mouth, so we have to draw that in as well. So with the mouth, you only want to do half an arc. And with the whiskers, there's three, so let's put in the three. If you want, you can make your pen tool a little bit bigger, the size, by pulling the slider up on the left-hand side. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. Let's double check without the lines, so you can hide the layer underneath to see. And I think the only thing is that my Totoro's body is a little bit shorter than the one in reference, but we will deal with that after we do what we're gonna do next. So now that we've drawn out half the body, we need to have the other half. So this is what I mean by with Procreate, you can kind of cheat where because it's front view and it's symmetrical and the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side, you can go to your layer slide it to the left, hit duplicate, and now you have another layer that's exactly the same as the layer that you just duplicated. So if you go to the move tool and you flip horizontally, you now have the other side of Totoro and you can move it to join the lines together. A little bit closer. So then when I hide the layer underneath, you can join the two pieces together by selecting one layer and pinching with your fingers. And then you can go in and you can clean the line work. So wherever it's joined, you need to clean up the, the line work a little bit. Make sure everything is joined connected, like properly, and that it's connected. Um, erase any lines that you see that are a bit off because you don't need them. But this is a very easy way to do front view when something is symmetrical, like the face is symmetrical. It's supposed to look the same on the left and the right. So I'm just cleaning up the line work here. Okay, so I'm looking at my Totoro and it's looking okay. The only thing is that I'm not too pleased with how circular he is. I want him to be a little bit more on the taller side. 
So if I go to the move tool and I hit distort, I can move Totoro up a bit to make him look more like the character. And I can pull the anchor points how I see fit to make him look a bit more like he does in the drawing. So I'm pulling the anchor points in and I'm pulling the top anchor points and I'm pulling the bottom anchor points out so he looks a bit fatter. I pulled the bottom anchor points so he looks a bit taller. Still think his bottom half is not as fat as it could be. And I feel like his ears are still a little small. So I'm going to take the S tool here, which is the magic wand tool. And I am, well, it's, it's sort of like a free hand magic wand tool. And I'm going to draw my marching ants over the ears. I want them both over both ears. So let's include both of them. Take the move tool and I want to undistort still, so I'm going to distort it and make the ears taller. Move the ears in a bit. There, I think that looks better. But I have to clean up the line work anytime I do that just to make it nice and smooth. Okay, so my Totoro is almost done. Um, he is missing some nails. So if I look at the reference, he has four nails. And the nails are basically triangles, so I'm going to add those in here. We just do V's on the circular part of the rounded arm. Oh, undo. Oh, I did one that's a bit more nail than the other, so let's do that again. And again, this is just V's on the curve of Totoro. So there are his little arms. I'm still missing his leaf. So the leaf is a triangle. So if you draw a triangle out, this is the basic shape of the leaf. Um, and what I do with that is, hang on. Let's do the basic shape underneath because I don't want to draw the triangle out on the main layer. So what I do with the triangle is it's not a perfect triangle. It's a curved triangle, much like the ear. So I like to do part of a curve here. And again, you can hold down the, like once you've drawn the arc, you can hold it down and then click edit shape and you can edit. And then you'll want to curve the other side and join that together. And once that's curved, I like to do a little line in the middle of the leaf and draw out a little stem. And the leaf has little veins in it too, so you're going to want to do a little bit of line work, like a little bit of arcs, to draw in the veins of the leaf. And that's pretty much it for the leaf. So you want to take, I just want to take this piece and I'm going to move it on top, but I'm going to shrink it down using the uniform tool. And with the green handle up top, you can rotate the leaf. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to shrink it down a little more. Rotate it a little more just so that I can see 
Okay, now what I also want to do is I want to cut this leaf out from the layer because I drew it on the same layer. So essentially you'd want to draw the leaf on a separate layer, um, but I didn't do that. So I'm going to take the wrench and I'm going to go to add and I'm going to cut. Whoops, hang on. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to paste it. And I have to reposition it again because it I undoed a little bit too far. So let's reposition it. So essentially when you draw the leaf, you'll want to draw it on a separate layer so that you can edit it. And I'm just going to put that in the middle. Rotate it a bit. Okay. Now the reason I put this on a different layer is because I can erase this line underneath that layer and it won't affect the leaf. You can merge the layer afterward, um, after you've erased the lines, but because it's two separate shapes, like the leaf is here and the body is here, you can erase the line of the body from underneath and not have it impede the leaf. You're not erasing any lines from the leaf. And then now that the line underneath is erased, then you can join them together. So that's what, what it looks like. Now let's thicken some of these lines just to make them nice and clean. Part needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay, now that looks a little bit more like Totoro. Um, one thing I will say when using the move tool and scaling anything, any line work or distorting any line work, um, one thing I will say about that is that you don't want to scale it more than the size that it is, uh, simply because if you're setting up your stage and you know what you're setting it up for, say you're setting your Procreate artwork up for something that's meant to go on a t-shirt or meant to get printed, then you want to set the canvas to the size that you are printing at. So if your print, mine is set to eight and a half by 11 at 300 DPI. And 300 DPI is the perfect amount of DPI. And I don't know if you know what DPI is, it's dots per inch. So it's the little dots that make up um, the pixels inside of a screen. But anyway, you want 300 DPI at minimum to get a really good crisp print. Um, so again, if you're doing it for a shirt or you're doing it for some poster printing, you want to make sure that the canvas is set to the right size, that the resolution is at least 300 dpi. Um, and then when you're drawing, you want to make sure that you don't distort the drawing more than the size that you drew it at. So say, for instance, Totoro here, I wanted to make him bigger. Well, I should have drawn him bigger to begin with, because anytime you use the uniform tool to resize these lines, the lines end up becoming blurry the bigger you go. Because the DPI at 300 at eight and a half by 11, it's at 300. So if you're zooming in or blowing up your drawing to say, I don't know, 12 by 18, then your 300 DPI will start to decrease. It'll end up being 200 DPI or 120 DPI. And because of that, the lines end up becoming like this, like very, very blurry. And it's going to print that way. It won't print crisp. It'll print blurry. The lines won't be crisp. The color won't be crisp. Um, and that's because you've blown it up by distorting it or uniform scaling it. And you don't want to do that. So whenever you're starting a project, it's good practice to make sure that you know um, what size your project is going to be printed at, um, what resolution it's going to be printed at, and and draw according to that don't go beyond like don't don't draw too small and then blow it up because that won't work 
So now that we have our Totoro, we can start coloring our Totoro. Now the first thing I like to do with my Totoro is I like to put in a little eye glare. And what I mean by that is like a little white dot in the eye. It gives it a bit of life, uh, it gives the character a bit of life. And then you do that to the other side. And then I like to pick the color from my reference. So I use my finger and I hold it down and you'll see up top in the color palette, it picked the color that I used before. So let's color this in. So I'll, I'll add a new layer and put that underneath the drawing layer. And as I'm coloring this, I'm going to mention, so one of the things I forgot to mention about the people that are using paper and pencil, um, I know that you can't do that whole thing where I join to the other side. <laughs> you draw one half of the body, then you don't draw the other half. With pencil and paper, you have to draw the other half. You can't cheat your way through it. Um, the way to make sure that your drawing is symmetrical uh, without having to use a program is to take your drawing after you've finished drawing the whole thing and take your drawing to a mirror and look in the mirror and see if the drawing looks correct to you. So you're basically eyeballing um, the drawing to make sure that it's symmetrical and it looks correct. Uh, it's a good way and a good trick to use with pencil and paper to use a mirror anytime you're drawing something. Uh, and show the drawing to the mirror because it gets you out of your perspective and you can see the drawing from a different perspective because when you're looking at something for too long in one um, in one perspective it tends to look okay on that side but when you reverse it it just doesn't look right so I always reverse my drawings when I'm doing them just to make sure there's nothing I'm missing or there's nothing that looks out of place now, if I were to reverse this one, it should technically look okay on both sides, just because mine was, yeah, so it pretty much looks the same on both, and there's nothing wrong with it. But it is good practice to do that, just to make sure that you haven't missed anything, and you will see that it, that it does look different in the mirror than it does when you're looking at it straight on. So I like to put the base colors down first. That's what I am currently doing. Um, if you're using pencil and paper again, when I used to draw traditionally on pencil and paper, I would use marker, I would use pencil crayon, I would use basically anything that I had in the house. Um, Prismacolor pencil crayons were my favorite just because they blend very well when you're doing shading. But I know a lot of people like to use like Copic markers. Um, the only problem I have with markers is that it's very hard to correct things after you've done something and then it doesn't look quite right and you can't exactly white it out or anything like that because that would ruin the drawing. Um, you know, so for me, pencil crayons were my choice of coloring tool. Or you can always draw it on pencil and paper and take it into Photoshop or whatever program you have and paint it in there as well. So when painting, I like to do the drag and drop the color in. It's a lot faster. The only issue with that, and I think I went over that in the owl tutorial, is that if you have a shape and it's not closed here, and you drag and drop a color in, it'll fill the whole stage. Um, so you just want to undo that. and then. But if you close the shape and you drag and drop it, it'll paint within that shape.
So just make sure that you've closed your shape when you're coloring inside. You don't want your whole canvas to turn out one color. Okay, so let's pick a different color. Let's pick the belly color here. Add another layer and then put that layer underneath the gray layer because that belly part is underneath the arms. And if you want to see the coloring a little bit better, you could always change the background color to something random so that you can see what you're coloring in. You can always change it back if you need to. Okay, let's paint in his eyes. So the eyes go over the gray because it is white and it is over that color. So any layer you put on top of another layer, that color will show up first. Um, the beige color only showed up because I didn't color in the belly in the gray layer. So we're gonna do the eye. And keep in mind that I always take the coloring of each thing and put it on a separate layer, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So let's color in the eye. Side. Let's color in the leaf by picking the green from the leaf and reference that I got there. And let's add a new layer and color in that leaf. But make sure when you add a new layer, it's underneath the initial drawing layer. Just clean that up a little bit, a little messy. Okay, clean this up a little bit. Now his paws are purpley blue. Let's add a new layer and add in those paws. Now, one thing this drawing is missing, and you can do this however you like, but I prefer to just do it the simple way here. Um, he's missing the little V's on his stomach, so I'm going to go back into the line layer, and I'm just going to draw little V's here where I know that he has those patches. doesn't have to be exact. Um, this one is a little bit not as V-like. It's a little too narrow, so I'm going to make that a little wider. I'm going to erase this one a little bit here. Not that long. Okay, so we're going to leave in those V's there like that. Um, if you want, you can make it a little bit more straight. I think mine is a little crooked, but you know, for, for reference purpose. 
or rather for the purpose of this, because I am going a little bit faster than I normally would, uh, we'll leave it like that. So the reason I put one color per layer is for shading purposes. So when we're shading, we want to make sure that we know where the light source is. So say your sun or light source is over here. I know that's a horrible sun. Um, then all your shadows would be on the right hand side. Um, and then vice versa, if the sun was on the right hand side, all your shadows would be on the left hand side. So for the jar, I had done the lighting on the right hand side. So we'll do the same thing with this character. Now you're going to want to pick the color that you use for the body. You're going to want to go to the layer that has the body color, the gray. Add a new layer. Tap that layer with your pen and then go to clipping mask and change that that layer into under N, change it to multiply. So now when you color in the area with shadows, it won't go anywhere beyond where you originally colored, where the layer is underneath. So if you've colored properly, it won't go outside of the lines because this layer is here. It's basically taking the same color, putting it on top of that layer and making it darker because you hit multiply for the filter. So let's add in some shadows. Now I like to make sure like when you're looking at lighting, and there's different aspects of art that you can look into. Some people actually specialize in lighting. Um, but for this purpose, because it's just a, like it's a cartoon and it's I do simple cell shading. So um, the lighting, because it's coming from the right, you want your shadows to be on the left. And so anywhere you see a crease or you think a shadow would be, you would put in that color in that area. So I think a shadow would be over here. By the ear here, I think it would be here, and I also think a little bit would be on the side here. I also think underneath his mouth would have a small shadow as well. I think I put a bit too much, but yeah. A little more. And I think his nose underneath would have a little, little bit of a shadow, but I have to erase some of that because it's too much. Under the leaf would have a shadow as well. I think a little bit here. And again, this is like if you were to see an object and you look at the lighting on it and where the shadows would be, um, it's basically how I'm determining where I want my shadows to be on Totoro. So under his arm would have a shadow here. Same with here. Bit here. And then his feet would have a shadow. Same with this side. And I think I'll put a little bit of a shadow here too. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, well, the gray is a little bit too dark. Um, the shadows just seem a bit harsh for Totoro. So what we can do to fix that, hang on, let me add in one more here. What we can do to fix that is go to the multiply layer and slide the opacity back a touch. I usually like to slide it to maybe about 50 or 40. And it gives it a bit of a shadow, but not so harsh. Now with Totoro too, he's kind of fluffy. 
So I like to add a bit of texture on top of the shadow layer. So what I do is I add another layer on top, I tap that layer, I go to clipping mask and I hit multiply again so that it's darker than the original gray. Go to my brush, hit textures, and depending on what type of texture you're looking at, um, I'm going to use signet. I like to use this when it's like fur. I'm going to color that in on top. And then I'm going to go back to layers and pull back the opacity on that layer to maybe about 60. So he has like a little bit of a texture, but not too much. Um, since he is furry, he does have like, he should have a little bit of texture. So now that I've done that, I'm going to work on the other parts of the body. So on the belly layer, I'm going to add a layer, click the layer, add clipping mask, then change it to multiply. I'm going to pick the belly color. I might make it a touch darker, just because, and then change my pen back to studio pen to shade. So we're going to put some shadows in here. And I think let's do let's do a shadow this way. So any time something is rounded too, you want to make the shadow somewhat rounded. In his belly too, I want to do a texture layer. So we're going to do the same thing where we added a layer on top, created the clipping mask on top, change it to multiply, go to the brush, change textures to signet and do the same thing on top. Okay, that's looking better. Now we're going to do the pause. Wrong brush. Go back to ink, studio pen. And I like to join the line up to where the shadow is on the gray, just because that's where the shadow should join. Same thing on this side. Okay, so his leaf now we have to do the same thing as well. And again, on top of the leaf solid layer, Clipping mask, multiply. There we go. So anytime you see something like this, where you're seeing the background, it means that the solid color underneath is not fully colored in. So if you go to the solid color and you color, hang on, let's see eraser, you color it in, you can fix that and then erase it. It's important to note that in Procreate, when you make mistakes, it's okay. You can undo the mistakes that you make pretty easily. <laughs> it's more when you're doing traditional work that when you make a mistake, uh, well, that's kind of it. Like, it's very hard to fix it once it's already been made. But at the same time, there is something to be said about traditional work. You have to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more precise about how you do things. So I'm going to change the opacity on the shadow, like the shadow layer for the leaf. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the body where it needs a texture because leaves have 
kind of a texture. So I'm going to put a clipping mask on top, go to multiply, change my brush, brush to texture, and I'm going to use a different texture. I'm going to use a Cure, I'm probably butchering the name, but Cure Log here. And then what I like to do as a finishing touch, underneath the layer that you have the line work on here, you want to add a layer underneath that layer. Take the white studio pen, change it down to size maybe 8 or 10, and put in some white highlights. Wherever you think that the lighting is going to hit the most, the strongest, is where you want to put in the light, the white highlights. So because my lighting is on the right hand side, the top of the leaf should have a highlight. So should the tip of the ear. Part of his head here should have a white highlight as well. If you're doing this on a pencil and paper with pencil crayon or marker, you would want to use, you don't even have to do the white highlights, you can leave it as is. Or if you want to do something in terms of highlights, you can take a white pencil crayon and smudge it over the highlighted areas, like color in white, and then use a smudger to smudge it in. Um, but be careful when you're doing that because you have to have control over your smudge stick if you have one. So his nose up top should have a white highlight to bring it out because it's in the front. The top of his feet should have a little bit of a highlight as well here. Same with this side here. I think this side needs a bit more. Yes. I'm going to give him a bit of white on the paw pads. Not that one. Now the one thing I will say that I am missing and I'm realizing that as I'm looking the ref at the reference is the tail. So I can draw that in after. I can take the pen tool and go to my line uh, layer and draw in the tail. The tail is basically a oval as well. But I'm going to draw it on this side. Pen's a little small. Yeah, I'm going to draw it on this side. I don't like that. Mm, nah. Way. Try to make sure it looks somewhat correct. Mm, I don't think his tail is that long. I think it's actually pretty short. So let's do hmm. It's not looking completely right, so I'm going to show you a little trick. So if we take all of these layers, what you can do is, if you right tap with your pen tool, you can highlight all these layers. And then you hit group. So now this is one functioning group of layers that you can move around without it uh, without it moving one layer at a time. And 
I'm going to put in his tail. So let's go back to the drawn layer. I think that looks good. Let's go back to the gray body area, like the layer with the gray coloring and color in the tail. Make the pen tool bigger. And as you can see, some of the stuff that I had colored in that layer for the body is coming through to the tail area where the clipping mask is. So it is coloring in the base, but it's adding in stuff that um, because I, call, I extended the color of the body, it's adding stuff that's on these multiplied layers. So the texture is fine. The shadow I want to fix. So I'll go to the layer up top that's the shadow. Select my pen tool and fix this here because it's messy with some shading. Now, if you want, you can name your layer so it's not as confusing. Um, the only reason I don't do that is because I already know which layers are which and what they're for. Uh, and there you have it. There's a Totoro uh, looking back at you. Hopefully you followed along with the tutorial and you have a Totoro looking back at you. I am going to add in a few more highlights to this just so you have it. Oops. Just a touch more. The tail too needs a little one. Okay, so that's how you draw Totoro. Uh, hopefully you have a Totoro looking back at you and you were able to follow along. Uh, sorry if the tutorial was a, went on a little bit longer. Please like and subscribe so you can see more tutorials like this one and you'll be able to draw some other things. Um, I hope you guys had a great new year. This is the first tutorial that I've done for the new year. Uh, one of the things I will say from before about Howl's Moving Castle, I'm going to show you what that one looks like just because it was very complicated to draw. So let's go to, you can see all my sticker work here. <clears throat> Howl's Moving Castle, when you look at it and all the shapes that they used, uh, it, it is ridiculous. And to be honest with you, this is a simplified version of the castle. I did not draw a very detailed version of it because it is very hard to draw. It would take me hours to figure out what shapes they used and how they used them. Um, but if you want to try to draw Howl's Moving Castle, I highly encourage it. It'll give you practice on uh, how to draw different shapes, how they use different shapes, breaking down things into different shapes. Um, you know, maybe another time we'll do a tutorial on that one, although that would probably make me cry because it was so, so detailed. Uh, in any case, that's it for this tutorial. Um, leave a comment, like, subscribe below and let me know if you want to see more tutorials like this one. Uh, and if you want to learn to draw anything else, um, you can leave a comment below and let me know what you want to learn to draw and maybe I'll put that in the next one. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, if you're using pencil and paper, that is totally fine and I hope that you were able to follow along as well. Uh, if you're using Procreate, there if there's things that you want to learn in Procreate that you don't really know about, um, let me know. So yeah, have a great new year and, and hope, let's hope for the best for 2022. <laughs> Bye everybody.